Hello, my name is Maria from MathMamoto.com. In this video, we're going to look at similar triangles and something special about their angles. Now first, let's review the basic facts about similar figures. When two figures are similar, then their corresponding angles are... what? The angles are actually congruent or equal. And their corresponding sides... They are not congruent because their size might be different. They might be longer or shorter because the figure was maybe shrunk or enlarged. But the corresponding sides are in the same ratio, in proportion. Let's look at these triangles, for example. These are similar triangles. They are of different sizes, but they have the same basic shape. You can see that this 32 degree angle is the same in all of them. Also, the other corresponding angles would be congruent. This angle here, however much it measures, is an obtuse angle. It's the same angle measure here and here, and also for the third angle. Now the sides differ in length, but they are in the same ratio. And what I mean by that is that let's say we take this biggest triangle versus the smallest one, and we make ratios of the sides. For example, 95 to 52. That would be one ratio, right? Whatever that is, it's equal to any of the other ratios, 66 to 36. Those two are corresponding sides also. And this would be equal to, if we take the third sides and their ratio, 37 to 20. Now, if you check this with the calculator, I have to tell you that my numbers are a little rounded. They are not exact. So when we check with the calculator, we're going to just get that they're approximately the same ratio, not exactly. But let's check. If I take 95 divided by 52, I get 1.8269, etc. So this one is about 1.83. And then 66 divided by 36, it's 1.833 repeating. And then 37 divided by 20, 1.85. So the decimals are only approximately the same. Because these 95, 52, these are all actually rounded to make them nice here for this exercise. But it is true that the ratios are exactly equal if we are using exact numbers. And then this special thingy. If two triangles are similar, we can know they are similar just by checking their angles. We don't actually need to check the sides. In other words, if you have two triangles and those two have the same angle measures, they are similar triangles. You don't need to check the sides. All right, now let's use that to check are these two triangles similar? Hmm, we're giving some of the angles here. Then there's these little tick marks here. What does that signify? Little tick marks through the sides. It signifies that those two sides are congruent, same length. So if these two sides are congruent, then this is an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. These two angles are the same. Whatever they are, they're the same measure. Then this smaller triangle here, it has two congruent angles. Well, that means that it also is an isosceles triangle. And we can calculate its top angle now, because the angle sum is 180. These two make 150, so this is 30, right? 30 degrees. So are these two triangles similar? Now we know. We can tell that their angle measures are not the same. So they are not similar. This one has 31 degrees here. This one has 30. And these ones are just, they're close to 75, but they are not exactly 75. So not similar. Okay, in this exercise, we're supposed to find the length marked with x. What do we know? We know that AB is parallel to CD. Anytime that in a geometry problem you have parallel lines and another line that is crisscrossing or intersecting them both, there's going to be corresponding angles and they're going to be congruent. And in this case, we have these two that are parallel and here's one transversal. And this one also is a transversal. So there's actually two separate transversals intersecting our two parallel lines or sides. And then these two lines intersect, so here's vertical angles, right? And those are congruent. Then we have two triangles. You can just guess by the way this exercise is set up that these two triangles probably are similar triangles 
and then we can use a proportion to calculate the length of side marked with x. So those are the basic principles governing this situation. So where would we start? First of all, like I said, we could verify that these two triangles are indeed similar by checking that they have the same angle measures. This angle is indeed congruent with this one because they are vertical angles. And this angle here, okay, we look at this transversal, these two are parallel, so there's a corresponding angle somewhere, right? If I continue this, so an angle that is a corresponding angle with this one, it's over here. And then this one is a vertical angle with it, so it's congruent too. This angle is congruent with this one. And now, in a triangle, if two angles are congruent, then the third one must be two. Because you could always calculate the third one by subtracting from 180 some of the two others. So, this one must be congruent with this one. So, we could also prove it by using, for example, alternate interior angles, or corresponding angles and vertical angles. Now that we have established that this triangle is indeed similar to this one, then the side length here. We know this one, we don't know x, but we need to know some more side lengths to be able to set up a proportion. And they are given over here. AB, 27.1 feet, and then CD is 20 feet. Alright, so now let's set up a proportion to solve for x. Now, x corresponds with this side of the bigger triangle. How do we know? Well, you could look at the angles. x, this side here, is between this dark pink and blue angle. And here also, this one is between dark pink and blue angle. So, the ratio of x to this side equals the ratio of this side to that side. x and 25.5, these are corresponding sides. And these two are also corresponding sides. Okay, so let's write those two ratios and we get the proportion, therefore. Whenever you have a ratio equals a ratio, that's called a proportion. x over 25.5 feet equals 20 feet over 27.1 feet. Now on this side, these units feet actually cancel. And now we will cross multiply in a proportion here. So we get 27.1 times x equals 20 times this 25.5 feet. In this equation, all we need to do is divide both sides by this multiplier, or by this coefficient it's called also. So now x equals all of that divided by 27.1, so I'll do that in a calculator. We get a long decimal number and it is about 18.819188, so on. But it makes sense to round it to the same accuracy as these others, 18.8 feet. Now, does that make sense? Let's check that our answer is reasonable. This is 18.8 feet. Okay, first of all, it does make sense that it's, it's less than either one of those. We have a smaller triangle here, so we expect the answer to be less than those numbers. Also, it's slightly less than the 20 foot side. And yes, this one is the slightly less than the 27 foot side. So it's very reasonable. It should be correct. And we're all done with this lesson.